Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, welcome to the uh, 9th of August 2023 Aries Working Group call. Uh, we are glad you're here. Um, we have some good topics today, including uh, our expansion of the of the topic that came up last week, uh, an Aries community effort or, uh, to support the uh, EIDIS 2.0 um, UDIARF. We'll explain those acronyms in a minute if those are unfamiliar. And uh, also some updates uh, on s some other stuff and and some uh, I think some a little bit of lack of progress given the fact that it's August and a lot of vacations happen during August. But uh, we're gonna have a great meeting today and make some forward progress on stuff. We have um, this is an anti or a, a hyperledger call and so both the uh, the antitrust policy notice uh, or the antitrust policy and the hyperledger code of conduct are in effect. Please be mindful of those and please reach out if you have any concerns about activities in our call um, and how they might need to be corrected. Uh, the uh, agenda link is again in the notes. You're welcome to make any changes there uh, that are useful to the community. Um, and please, uh, and we do appreciate your contributions. Um, are there, is there anyone new today that would like to introduce themselves? I'm definitely glad that uh, that you're all here. Um, uh, announcements also related to August being uh, a big vacation month. Bifold meetings are paused for August, and uh, and uh, AFJ is biweekly um, with meetings during the summer, um, also during August. Um, any other announcements or or corrections to those uh, that we should have for the group today? Right, we are sneaking up into the fall. We'll, uh, we'll get IAW on the list here. The Internet Identity Workshop is, is worth attending if you uh, are in this space and interested. Um, and we'll we'll get that on the list in coming weeks. Uh, do any of our projects want to share release status or work updates that have been happening during this last time period? All right. Um, on our agenda today, we have some topics that uh, carry over from last week, mostly because there hasn't been enough progress made. Um, but we have uh, we're going to have a quick uh, marketing update. Um, we're going to review kind of the important issues, which are the the uh, the coordination uh, off of uh, of unqualified dids and the related issues there. Um, we have some some non progress that has happened <laughs> that we need to still push forward and make happen so that we are ready to do that. Um, and then the um, the uh, we've got the, any VDR Askar is that a carryover Stephen from last week or did you add that for this week? I saw your comments in in the uh, in the chat. Sorry, which one? Uh, um, the the indie VDR Askar transition. Was this carryover from last week? I, I I wasn't sure as I saw the the comments that you had made to. No, I don't have I, I don't have anything particular to say. I was going to maybe mention it, the indie VDR um, did indie did get merged into the main branch, so that's now in the main branch. Um, so nice. it's an announcement, but um, it's not an official release based on that. But that should happen in the next day or two. Cool. Uh, well, let, well, let's save the thunder for that to the next week then. I I uh, I I didn't. Yeah. I, in, in my haste this morning, I wasn't sure if the, it, I didn't check whether this is a carryover or related to the comments that you uh, made in the in the Discord channel. So that's okay. Um, and then the last topic uh, is going to be probably our main one today, which is the uh, the the uh, architecture reference framework coming out of the European uh, Union digital identity um, uh, effort and uh, and what and what we can do there to coordinate as a group. Um, any changes that we want to make to the agenda before we get going? All right. Um, marketing update. Uh, Helen or Alex? I see Alex. Yeah, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Helen's away this week, I think, primarily, so I'll give you a very brief update here. Good progress. The first changes are live. You go to that link there, which is incidentally the first search results that you would normally get. 
if you search for hyperledger Aries for most people. New short description there um, under type library. You've got some new panels up there about contributors, commits, and lines of code. We're going to have a longer description going in here. And we're also talking to Hyperledger if they can get some funding together. There's a little bit of money so we can make a small animated video to have this section as well. So lots of changes coming for this section that we're working on right now. There's also a draft page in the wiki, which is linked to the second bullet there. If you want to see where things are going, that's shaping up. We're going to make that a bit more accessible down the bottom, but that's got a lot of the new talking points in it as well. Um, and that's progressing well. I'll let you know when those changes are going through. And finally, um, as the bullet says on the agenda there, Hyperledger are doing a lot of work on identity and identity comms this, this quarter. So if you've got things you want to highlight, they're all ears. So reach out to the people mentioned or to myself if you want to uh, have something reaching the wider community. So yeah, things are actually happening and becoming live, which is very exciting. And um, I'm sure there'll be more to update next week. At least I hope there'll be more to update next week. That's fantastic. We also need to, to acknowledge the Hyperledger new logo um, that they've done. I think it's a, it's quite a cool improvement. Um, and so it's not, uh, it's similar to their old one, but I think, I think graphically uh, much improved. So, so very cool there. I did notice though, they've got to, they've got to watch the, uh, the transparency on their, uh, on their favicon, uh, if you will, uh, uh, it shows up in the browser tab, but um, but but pretty fantastic, uh, cool progress there. Thank you, but, Alex, for that update. But then, Sam, just to note that uh, the favicon is being updated. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, we're, we're catching um, bugs and errors on the site, and we're fixing them as they go. So if you look at related projects, we're gonna that that's gonna be edited, and and we're working on uh, rolling out changes over time. So um, yeah, uh, well well done, uh, Sean and and team. Uh, and, and and thanks for all you do there. It looks pretty great. I'm a, I'm a fan of the new one. I think it's it's it uh, it acknowledges the old one, but looks so much better. It's very cool. Awesome. Um, on the did peer three front, um, there uh, and the unqualified coordinated uh, unqualified dids coordinated update. Um, not a lot has happened this last week. Uh, we um, I suspect uh, mostly as as a as a result of folks uh, being off on vacation. Um, and we we might be in this state for a couple of more weeks um, where it's a little uh, hard to, um, uh, to to make the necessary progress, but we'll keep tracking it, um, and we will um, and we will uh, make sure that, uh, that that we we move it along at the speed that we're capable of doing so, um, and that uh, that we're ready to move quickly on that um, as folks return from uh, from vacation and, and the community is is more or less back together. Um, any any updates that anyone wants to share or corrections for anything that I happen to get wrong um, on on that? Um, we're making good progress in um, in Akapai on on peer uh, did peer three. Lots of you know learning and and figuring out for people that haven't looked at this or or things we haven't looked at in a long time. Um, <clears throat> I think it. I think we're in pretty good shape, or we're going to be um soon so that's good um one of the good things about this is i'm now fairly sure that once that the dids are used during establishing a connection but are not used thereafter um and so it actually becomes a lot easier um once the connection is established it's just during connection establishment that that it's a little tricky so um, I think we should be in, in good shape from that perspective. So that's a good thing. Um, I will cross out this um, one part of the, um, the, but the verification key and key agreement key and all that stuff. Um, we don't even need that. Um, the, yeah, that can be just crossed out yeah, or deleted. That would work. Um, but the... Uh, you know, the good thing is there isn't really a need to transform unqualified dids, uh, existing unqualified dids, because the dids themselves are not actually used after creation. So um, that makes it a lot easier. What do you, can you explain a little bit more what you mean by that? When, when you send a didcom one message, um, you create a... Um, I, I believe it's a JWK that holds the key that's encrypting it. It may be it, but um, it, what what gets stored there is the key. 
So it's not a reference to a key. And so if it was a reference to a key, then, then that would include the did. But in fact, it is a key, a base 58E25519 key. Right. And as a result, you're not actually exchanging dids back and forth as you send messages. We aren't yet. We will in the transition uh, to didcom v2. Didcom two, yes. Right. <clears throat> and so, so it just makes this a little easier. We still are working out, okay, here's how we're going to transform it. And here's how we'll reference it. But um, the good thing is, you know, it's, it's, it makes the transition to unqualified in, in didcom one a lot easier. It does, and, and, and you're right. I had I was so focused on didcom v2 that I, I was I was not uh, mentioning okay. the, the, the key based nature of of didcom v1 as it applied here. Yeah. So, so, so okay. Which and I get why now you're you're worried about that. So okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so, so the transition. In, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. <laughs> Sorry. No, you. I was just going to say that that uh, that we the the importance there of making sure that we have them both solved during this update is important. So that yeah. so that we're we're it's fixed by the time we get to didcom v2, um, yep. and, and, and and that's that's the real important piece is that um, is that it, it's it's ready for moving off of that entirely. Yeah. All right, go ahead. You're gonna say something about AFJ. Uh, I would note uh, AFJ did a merge this week of a or at least a lot of work. Um, I think the the PR was merged, but on didcom v2, so that's exciting stuff. Mm, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> not yet okay but we are, we are we are very you are very close yeah very close but uh, yeah we, excellent we we haven't yet uh, merged that into main branch we, are, yeah, we have another it. branch which is called the the 2 but but yeah yeah we are we are pretty close to, to to have it but i think that sam has a good point here about the fact that maybe in a future we will upgrade existing with v1 connections to uh, v2 right so yeah for 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 that it will be useful to have this uh, this uh, migration internally and and have it okay much good better. yeah i agree by, by, by the way uh, uh, i have a question for you steven in in aka for for this exchange are you going to use uh, did peer 2 yes okay nice so did peer two and then and then um and this is where it got kind of weird as I, I would say that you know did peer two but in future you would use you know for future interactions you would use the did peer three yeah um reference uh, you know uh, string but that's where I realized in didcom one you never actually pass the did string again you only pass the key, um, but Sam's right that in, in didcom v2, um, you do pass the did, and if so, then you want to use the, the, the did peer three. Yeah. So there's, cool. there's two concerns here. Uh, one obviously is the continued operation of existing uh, connections, which is why we're doing this. Um, the, the other one is that we want to eliminate the need for anyone approaching our community to understand the 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 um, the old way of doing things that yeah. we hit yeah. we hit we need to make go away, um, yeah. and that way all all they need to understand is that dids are involved there. So those those are the two those are the two kind of concerns, and we may uh, in the nitty gritty need to um, figure out what the right sort of compromise is uh, towards those goals. Um, but that's that's the goal and the point there, um, and, and partially so that we can, of course, be ready for didcom v2, as I've said. Also, because uh, we want to, um, we just want to make it easier for people approaching the community to not have to learn like some special thing that we did historically. Yeah. Uh, excellent. Thank you, Stephen, for the clarifications there. Did 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 we do? We need research to do this. Did anyone happen to look into the, the right label? Uh, for the creation of the did doc, I, we have we just need to, to dig into the into the RFCs and see what it actually says. Um, that with what it says in the did v two spec. I didn't get a chance to do that one. Okay, I didn't either. So, <laughs> but but, but I, I I think that did communication is for did v one right or on did com Oh, or that's right. That was the question. Can you add that to the notes? Um, the question was, are you? 
do we di differentiate between the ITCOM V1 and V2 by the type or by the accept parameters? Um, it's by the type, the, the service type uh, changes. The accept parameters are useful inside of DIDCOM V1 and, and knowing whether you're using the old envelope or the new envelope format. That was a, that was a, a transition step as part of AIP2 in order to uh, prepare for the eventual move to DIDCOM V2. Um, but it's the, uh, but, but that's the difference. So, okay. um, so we do different we, we do differentiate with, with the type. And so we still have to nail down exactly which is to be used. Yes. Uh, we just need to go find the, 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 the right link that, that, uh, that says that in the docs. And, and then we'll need to do a quick check against existing uh, code bases to make sure that we're, that lines up with what's actually been done uh, to, to make that to make that happen. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Anything more on this topic? So Stephen, I really appreciate your info here. All right. Um, so the, the next thing to discuss today is the, um, the, the, there's a lot of titles that apply here. Uh, and let me explain what these are, what these actually mean. Um, the EITIS 2.0 is the second version, obviously, of EITIS. Um, that's the European uh, Digital Identity Standard. Um, and there's a 1.0 uh, that, uh, that is, is in kind of an effect. Um, it kind of didn't quite have the goals that I'm, I'm heavily summarizing and so may not be perfectly accurate as I say this. Um, but it didn't quite have the goals uh, that uh, that it aspired to, um, and uh, and so they are uh, underway with EITIS 2.0, um, which is an update of those given the newer available technologies and and based on lessons learned uh, with things that didn't work with EITIS 1.0. Um, and so this is a definitely a European standard, but but uh, has lots of effects all over. Um, there are uh, countries uh, not in the European Union watching this standard and being mindful of it, both because they want to work, uh, you know, with the European Union on various things. And also, um, uh, you know, want to, uh, of course, learn any lessons or wisdom that they can uh, they can offer there. Uh, EUDI is the European Union uh, Digital Identity Standard that I believe I probably have this backwards. Responsible for EITIS 2.0. In the ARF, here is the architecture reference framework that has been proposed as the way to satisfy the requirements in EITIS 2.0. Um, and so. That's a lot of uh, that's a lot of acronyms um, uh, together. I I, uh, I will fully claim that I am not the world's most expert on all of these things, um, but have been waiting around enough to to reach some level of familiarity with them um, and everything else. Uh, so uh, linked here is a is a post that Animo uh, made. Um, this is a little bit ago at the moment. I can kill some of these old tabs up here, um, where they described their desire to make. Uh, the Aries framework JavaScript align with uh, with the architecture reference framework. Here's a link for that. Um, this is a little bit thick. Um, there uh, are useful things here if this is the right thing that I think it is. Um, there's some new terminology here uh, that we won't go over deeply today, um, but they they differentiate between uh, between a, a, a verifiable credential that identifies a person and then identify verifiable credentials that do other things, and they have different requirements as it as it relates there. Um, and in lots of these you know acronyms uh, come down through that. Um, there's uh, the other really useful diagram is not that one this has been updated since i've seen it last so i might be looking for a diagram that doesn't exist this is the one um this is a um, this helps understand the the protocols and the credential types in play and uh it has um identified as required open id for vci and open id for vp um, and then uh, as well as the proximity flow, uh, this ISO number basically refers to the MDOC proximity flow uh, specification. Um, and you'll notice that there's some alignment between, uh, between that. It doesn't say MDOC exactly in here, but, but the MDL MDOC uh, standard defines a proximity flow, which is Bluetooth based, but specific to it exactly. It doesn't build on any other protocols uh, in, the, in the process of doing that. Um, it also identifies both the, this MDOC uh, uh, standard uh, as well as um, SD Jots. Um, 
as the as the method th that they're identifying for the credential type being used there. Um, and they also have uh, type ones and type twos are, are kind of a big thing. Type two uh, uh, configuration has has to do with not um, um, and I may be wrong here, so please, someone please correct me if I am, has to do with, uh, with uh, sort of the secondary non, uh, you know, uh, personally identifying uh, information credentials um, that, that might be related within the system. And so for those, they also allow JSON LD, uh, VC and LD proofs, um, but, um, but SD JOTs are, are, are required in, in type one. And so that, that seems like the, the common target that people are approaching. You'll notice it says other optional protocols here, which they left open. Um, but but realistically, because these these top ones are required, those are going to be the ones that that, that that folks are focused on. Um, and so um, this is uh, this guides a lot of this discussion. So if you look at the at the list that, that Animo has has talked about here, um, they're talking about this is the same ISO standard, the the 18013-5. Uh, um, and so it, uh, this is the mobile driver's license flows, um, which are very different both from a credential format and from a protocol perspective than anything done elsewhere. Um, they also have the OpenID for VC related protocols. There's two of those. There's the VCI for verifiable credential issuance and VP for verifiable presentations um, that, that, that comprise the, they're commonly referred to as this, but not really officially. Um, and, uh, and, and those are the protocols there that can actually pass those. Um, these are, Pretty nicely designed to carry, uh, similar to the to the DIDCOM uh, credential protocols, to carry any credential format so long as sort of the definition is 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 defined there. <clears throat> and so this will actually pass MDOC credentials. You'll notice in this diagram that um, that that the MDOC spec does not define a protocol for the issuance of that. They kind of hand wave that and say it has to happen, but they don't specify how. Only the presentation of it. And so one of the things is, that has emerged as a, as a popular choice there is the, is the OpenID uh, for VC protocols. Of course, uh, we could document and describe how the same thing could be done with our protocols that have been designed inside of DIDCOM for, uh, for issuance and presentation um, of multiple credential types, but we haven't done that work. And so in absence of documentation, the only defined path there is, is the OpenID for VC stuff. Um, uh, for issuance and, and of course for presentation in addition to the proximity flow. Um, you'll also note that the, the MDL spec does not um, define how to do an online presentation of it, only the proximity flow over Bluetooth. Um, and so there, there's a little bit of a, an odd gap in the spec there where they were mostly designing that for in-person presentations, not necessarily use across the internet. And so that's another thing going on there. So the OpenID for VC uh, related protocols. Um, it also specifies uh, the use of a hardware security module for the for the keys. And when I say the keys, I'm air quoting it a little bit because they're not very specific about exactly which keys they mean, in the sense that um, is this just keys you use for the credentials? Is it, it or, or does it like is every key required to be stored in H in the HSM? That's a little bit of a of an interesting question. Also note that H that the hardware security modules do not typically contain. The broad range of key supports that we are key types that we are comfortable with in the cryptography that, that we leverage and so there's a, some open questions on exactly how that that happens but um, their uh, animo would like that to be added to ascar so that uh, so that they can use ascar as as an underpinning for that um, and then the last thing uh, that came up in the diagram that i brought up was was sd jots um, as a format uh, so jots are as a jwt J json web token and uh, there are that was in kind of invented prior to verifiable credentials, um, but they have an adaptation of them, or a, or a, speci a specific use of that spec that uh, that qualifies as a verifiable credential. The SD is for selective disclosure, um, that uh, and they have worked out uh, recently a way to uh, modify the signatures applied to a JOT such that you can selectively disclose the the the, the credentials that are actually in there. Um, and so that um, that's the the fourth item of support that they're that they're talking about. And so they they also call to kind of like gather the community together to do this and, and to work it out, which is great. It was voiced last week um, that, uh, that that focusing on this more broadly as the Aries community and not just with an AFJ would also be valuable. Um, and so I wanted to to uh, one of the things to to do that I was hoping today as, at the beginning of this is to um, 
raise awareness of any efforts that are going on in, in, in different code bases so that we could understand what was already happening and then perhaps identify work that was not yet happening that, uh, that, that needs to be coordinated within the community. There's a whole lot of talking. And uh, in, in please, if I've made an error on, on, on something here, please uh, please offer a correction there um, so that I, we can avoid uh, confusion. Um, and, uh, and also, um, for those that are aware of, of efforts in code bases already, if you uh, would mind volunteering that information out so that we can be aware of, of work that's already happening in various ways. Um, Sam, one thing I've noted is if you're following along with what's happening in AF Go, um, they've got a full effort right now to add SD Jots um, to AF Go. So um, seeing a lot of of PRs and things um, towards that goal. Um, the other thing I was thinking was as as I understand it, uh, M Docs and SD Jots are very similar. Um, I believe they both yeah. use the same technique for selective disclosure. So one would expect that you get some crossover there that might be. Did you say M Docs and SD Jots? Yeah. I was from aware what I understand, that um, selective MDoc. disclosure is part of M Docs, so that's cool. Yes, and I think it's the same technique, uh, same cryptographic technique underneath. Cool. Um, what other efforts are underway for adding various elements uh, that we've discussed here to uh, to ARIES projects? We talked a little bit about this yesterday during the ACAPUC call, but we are currently exploring what it would look like to enable support within ACAPI for open ID for VCI endpoints in the protocol. Um, we discussed a number of, uh, of options that could be something that is implemented directly within ACPI. Um, that's probably my least favorite of the options. The other two being uh, as a companion service to ACPI, very similar to the VC Authin OIDC um, project that's been around for quite a while. Um, and then third option would be as a plugin. Um, which just behaves more or less like the companion service, just with tighter integration into Akapai, so it has more direct access to the crypto and, and other elements that would, it would need access to. So it's it's something we're considering um, and weighing our options on um, at this point. So that was just for the OpenID for VCI and v, v, VP protocols, is that correct? Uh, yes, uh, we, we have also looked at the SDJOT stuff. Um, the crypto for the SDJOT stuff actually isn't too uh, too crazy. It's, it's pretty straightforward, um, at least by our estimation so far. Um, and there's already pretty solid libraries out there for it as well. Um, so we, we recently added JWT sign and verify endpoints to Akapai. Um, and we're also looking at adding SDJOT variants of the same sign and verify endpoints. Um, and, and then those could be pretty trivially integrated with an OpenID for VCI implementation, I think. So, yeah. So this feels like a lighter lift than the, than the protocol support. I would say so, yeah. There's gonna be if we wanted to use SD Jots and JWTVC within issue credential and present proof within Akapai, that would be a significant chunk more work. But if we're, you know, if we're focusing on shortest path to open ID for VCI and, and European standards compliance, uh, I think we can wait to do that format definition and, and all that stuff for uh, uh, DITCOM protocols and uh, focus on just integrating with the open ID for VCI stuff.
Um, cool. Other work that's going on. Um, I would add that um, in that presentation you gave, they talked about the category two, I think you said, or type two um, being JSON LD um, format, W3C um, data integrity. Uh, that would be the path to um, getting an on creds support in. So um, doing the work to make an on creds uh, W3C JSON LD uh, compatible and um, securing it with securing a JSON LD credential with an on creds and perhaps a second um, you know NIST supported key. So that's a, a second that's the, that would be the path in for being able to use an on creds in um, that type of architecture. Um, um, yes, the other thing that I'll mention too is that obviously the other protocols would allow for DIDCOM to exist and not invalidate the solution. Um, but it's clearly not as a selected option. Um, the thing that we, the, the best option that we have going forward to help them correct their limited uh, choice, limiting choice um, with the OpenID for VCI protocols um, is to is to uh, allow for or design feature parity for DIDCOM credential related protocols. So Daniel mentioned, for example, adding the format definitions, um, you know, is separate work, but but also, uh, you know, shows that uh, you have another protocol that meets all, all the necessary needs for what they're doing. That would be not just the format definition for SD SDJOTS, um, but also the format definition, of course, for the uh, for the anon creds as an LD cred. Um, we've, we've talked about that in previous meetings, but also, of course, the format definition for an MDOC as a as a credential uh, type um, that would allow for the the MDL stuff to to trans uh, transfer over that. That's particularly interesting with um, with a DIDCOM uh, Bluetooth transport uh, because it shows an alternative way of uh, of presenting these besides the proximity flow um, that is this usable in this particular context. And so um, that's a, that's a powerful thing to do. Um, it, not that it that it's necessary for the basic requirements, but for the sort of the future evaluation and, and, and perhaps uh, revisions of the of the EUDI um, ARF in the future. That uh, that that having protocols ready to go changes the nature of those discussions if if we already have protocol compatibility there. So. Um, So maybe a bit of a pedantic point to make here, but the anon creds in LD creds uh, with LD creds, would it perhaps be a little bit better to describe that as anon creds in W3C VC data model format as opposed to LD since we're not using linked data proof signatures? Yes, sure. that's probably true. It, it's actually, um, the way it was worded, I was trying to match the wording that's in the, um, in this in, in the on the screen that um, Sam showed earlier, I believe they said with data integrity. Oh, LD proofs. Okay, JSON LD with LD proofs is what's there. Um, but yes, W three C format, W three C data model format. Yeah, the the specific narrow eye of the needle threading here is that. Um, with the uh, non creds in the W3C data model format, um, we can dual issue a credential that is both LD proof enabled and a non creds enabled in the same credential. And that would slide narrowly in this window right here. Is that, exactly. is that your point, Stephen? Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. And then other, uh, the, these other optional protocols uh, can be useful here so long as we define the, the data types necessary to pass the credentials that they're talking about.
right? The, the MDL, the SD jots, and, and of course the, the LD proofs that, and, and, and that may also have an on-creds uh, sort of along, along for the ride in the same format. The, the, uh, the W2C data model allows for uh, multiple proof types to be present in the same uh, data structure itself, which allows for uh, the coexistence of, uh, of LD proofs, but also an on-creds um, for the credential that's being passed. So thanks, Daniel, for that clarification. Other uh, comments or, or ongoing work here? So we've recently added the Hyperledger non-creds project um, and the non-creds RS. Do we see the W3C format um, uh, formatting of a non-creds credentials going into the non-creds RS project? Or uh, I know there's existing work from Andrew Whitehead that's currently written in Python, but obviously our, our, our user base for Aries is a little bit wider than just Python. Yeah, that's definitely the approach would be to put it into the Anacreds Rust. Um, it's only like um, the actual non-testing code is about 300 lines of Python code. And, and all it is is moving data around into uh, in data structures. So it's 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 trivial work. Um, it's it's really just figuring out the best way to um, to get it implemented and and enable it to be used. And it's the same type of thing we always see, which is if you receive it, it's fine. Um, you know the other side. If you receive either format, you can deal with it. And then it's a question of when can you start sending it out in the new format. Um, so that everyone expects it. So this same sort of um, community coordinated update. Or we may not have to do that as long as we can specify the different sort of credential types and all of the other protocols that are going along, which means that you could send it in the old way. You could also discover that the new way is being used. Um, the, the updates are, are necessary when there's not a, a higher level way of doing that. Um, we'll have to do the do the the research into this, but I think we may be able to use the existing existing mechanisms we have in order to discover that support, um, which makes it a little bit easier for deployment. It means that projects can deploy it um, without really fouling things up and and, and the need to to broadly coordinate. We may want to push it as a community effort to to gain support in the in the various things and then demonstrate that. But as far as actually executing a community coordinated update, it, it may be a little bit easier than that. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. Um, very cool. So uh, we have, uh, this is, uh, so an AFGO, AFJ, and ACAPI, uh, the, the main code bases here. Um, we have uh, an OpenID for VC uh, support being looked at. Um, we've also looked at to understand the, the JWT support there. Um, and then we've noted that the, the, the protocol, you know, the definitions for these credential types is, is extra work. Mentioned in Animos list, but not yet really anywhere here yet is the um, uh, is the Ascar work, which is decidedly a community effort there. Um, uh, so this is uh, support for the hardware security modules. Um, and so that hasn't really been discussed anywhere. Um, uh, Steven, you're a little more proximate to Andrew than the rest of us. Um, has, has this come up in conversation at all, or is he aware of this? Not that he has to do the work. I'm just, I'm just curious. Yeah. I mean, it's been talked about in the past and, and theorized that this would work and, and is possible. And he's, uh, uh that's about all I know is, um, that structurally it's possible to do um but no work has gone gone into it as far as i know and ascar uh to clarify is in rust right yes yes yeah 
I was 99% sure that was true, but I want to make sure. Um, so that is that is Rust based. So uh, all of you teams that have idle Rust developers sitting around, this would be. <laughs> I'm, I'm making a joke here. Um, this would be a great uh, a great application of, of Rust skills to to be able to look inside and and see what would be required for uh, for HSM support and, and satisfying this particular requirement. Um, there is a little bit more research that needs to be done by those who understand the details here on what exactly needs to be stored in an HSM. But having g generic HSM support is is the largest chunk of that, and then figuring out the details of implementation uh, will be useful there too. So. Um, yeah. Um, good. We have more underway uh, than nothing for sure. And so, uh, you know, understanding this, I think, is, is pretty darn important. Um, any other comments or thoughts or ideas that folks have on the EIDIS2 UDI RF topic? All right, I'm hoping that uh, that we can uh, draw in some experts to help us figure out the the, the details and the in the question marks that we have around this, um, and then um, for for those uh, with ongoing work in these various efforts, it would be really cool to hear back about uh, about you know progress that's happening um, or or things that uh, that we've learned along the way uh, that may be more broadly useful to the community in that manner. So that's uh, that's excellent as well. Um, and with that, we're at the end of our agenda today. Are there, uh, we have 12 minutes left. Are there additional topics that, uh, that folks would like to discuss? Uh, if not, we can end the meeting early today. Kim, your hand is up. Um, <clears throat> I think it might be worthwhile to have a discussion about the the movement of RFCs over to the diff and kind of a roadmap of uh, removing the RFCs that are protocols uh, that exist in the diff from the ARIES RFCs. So um, here's some, that's, that's a good topic. Here's some historical context. Um, a lot of things were done in Aries because there wasn't originally, because there wasn't another place to do them. For example, DIDCOM was developed in Aries and later spun out uh, and that the DIDCOM V2 work um, happened in a separate group of the diff. Um, the uh, DIDCOM.org exists and there's a DIDCOM user group that actually uh, meets on Mondays um, that is open. No diff membership is required uh, for that. Um, and uh, and everyone is invited to attend. There's also an open uh, Discord channel for that topic as well um, that, uh, that that exists uh, for for that particular group. And so there are a lot of of the uh, proto some of the discussions we're having today. For example, the uh, migration off of the unqualified dids is distinctly an Aries discussion topic. Um, but there's uh, lots of stuff that actually applies more generically to um, uh, DIDCOM generally speaking, um, and some of those uh, conversations are better held um, elsewhere. So um, there are two types of, uh, there's a couple types of RFCs. We have the concept and the feature uh, RFCs, and, and lots of the, of, the fe of the feature RFCs actually describe DIDCOM protocols. Um, lots of those are at least linked to, but, uh, but, but are, are more broadly applicable than, than just the ARIES community. And so those protocol definitions um, have a really good, you know, uh, forward home um, over in the DIDCOM users group and on DIDCOM.org um, as a place for those to live. Um, some of theirs, and, and, we, and we ran into this uh, last week as we were discussing things, um, there isn't yet a place inside of the DIDCOM users group for non-protocol based RFCs. And we ran into this uh, with the definition of a, um, of a feature type uh, to be used inside of uh, the Discover Features protocol um, for support of DID methods. 
um, and uh, and as a result, um, there is a little bit of work that needs to be done there to figure out how to accommodate. Um, we have far fewer Aries RFCs being created these days um, as a result of that. Um, and so there's a, a little bit of a discussion that hasn't really happened yet. Um, and that Kim, I think, is, 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 is highlighting about where these things ought to live and should we do anything about the historical RFCs that already exist within Aries. Um, but uh, but maybe uh, be better homed over in the Didcom users group. Um, I have uh, that's kind of the scenario. Um, I, I think uh, I, I am yet to come to a personal conclusion on what I think might be the best option there. We certainly have a few of a, a few options in front of us, um, but uh, but it's not quite clear uh, on exactly what should happen in my mind or on what the timing should be. Any any thoughts or, or comments on the topic from from anyone? Well, I'll take a first stab at it here. Um, I, I think leaving the RFCs and the Aries RFC, um, I think causes some confusion on what the source of truth is. Um, and so I, I think uh, at least marking and linking to uh, what the source of truth is would be valuable, even if we leave them in existence, so that um, uh, there's clarity on what organization um, has the source of truth. And, and, and I think regardless, the AIP concept needs to continue. So whether it's in Aries or DIFF or whatever, it, it needs to be um, used. Um, I think I think the, the interim format, protocols are not are, haven't yet been discussed for for something that moves. They they can of course happen everywhere, but Aries is a really useful community to do that in. And so no, that I don't, there's there's not really an argument at this point that AIP should should not exist. Um, the the proposal is not that all RFCs move, but that they're that I I believe, but but that the 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 RFCs that contain stuff that ought to be everywhere else be updated uh, to link to whatever the sort of the canonical version of it is, rather than. Um, but anything we still need, for example, um, uh, community coordinate updates are within the Aries community are still going to need RFCs, et cetera. So this isn't that all RFCs die. It's just that we no longer we we resolve the confusion about number one where new ones should be created for various topics, and number two. Um, what to do about the historical ones when we don't want to have, you know, multiple sources of truth on a topic. Does that make sense, Stephen? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think we also have to come up with a far better way than GitHub repository markdown files to publish them to make it far easier to navigate them. I mean, way too many got created. Um, the only ones that matter are the AIP ones, so we definitely could do a way better job at coming up with a way to make it clear which ones matter and which ones are 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 less important. Let's say. Right. Um, I've been playing with uh, MK Docs, and that might be a reasonable mechanism to do so. Uh, they they pair well with GitHub Actions and for publishing on GitHub Pages. And so I think that there's some there's some options there moving forward. Yeah, I I did the Akapai Akapai.org site with Make Docs and just a conversion script. Um, and it was pretty dead simple. The hardest thing being um, sort of on the fly cleanup of links to make them resolve with it within your new structure. But that's about the only tricky thing. And I came up with a good scripting way to to deal with that whenever I ran across one. Right. Um, so there's a couple steps I think that needed to resolve this. And, and one is that we need to make sure protocols, this is pretty clear. Uh, we have a, a, an existing process over in the Didcom users group for for the uh, for managing and updating of protocols. Um, what's less clear um, is what to do with the non-protocol related RFCs. There's our, there, there are a few and that, that's something that needs to be, needs to be resolved. Um, I'm gonna ask that that be put on the agenda um, over there for this next Monday um, so that we can talk about what to do there. 
and uh, and make that happen. Um, and then uh, when that's resolved, it's a little bit easier to then go through and we could we, we could go through and identify the, the the options that are better homed over at the at the Didcom users group. We can uh, we can create new versions there and then update the copies that we have here to, to sort of point to the right location as the canonical version of that. Um, and so there's certainly some options there. Right now, there's some protocol definitions that are listed on didcom.org that actually point to Aries RFCs. Um, and that and that probably ought to ought to be updated where the the actual uh, documentation ends up there uh, rather than pointing back to the Aries RFCs just to avoid confusion. Um, and so there's definitely some uh, some work to be done uh, trying to make that happen there. So Kim, that's not a super satisfying resolution of the discussion, but but there's definitely stuff that needs to to come up at the, at the Didcom users group to sort of enable the larger discussion or the larger effort to, effort to occur. Any further comments there or, or things that we didn't address well? Any comments on anything? Um, so Sam, would it be valuable to link to the diff in this meeting? Um, like in the project section up above, so everyone knows how to and where to get to the diff. Yes, you're welcome to add a link. Um, I'm, I'm I have to run really fast to something else, and so I'm not going to be able to do it right now. But I can come back later and add to the notes or anyone else that has the the relevant links to the Didcom users group that would be appreciated. Um, and uh, and we can better sort of circulate. It's been a while since we've highlighted related meetings as a regular thing, uh, but that might be necessary sort of uh, to just uh, regularly increase awareness about what's what will be talked about there and and things to happen. Um, and so an as another example, uh, there is a um, there is a in the Didcom v2 spec and problem report. There's a there's a requirement. Um, that the parent thread ID be present that may not always be satisfiable. And so there, there'll be some discussion about whether, um, you know, how, what to do on that um, uh, in did v 2 land and when you're, re when you're returning problem reports uh, for a message which you cannot actually process and don't know the thread of. Um, and so that's, that's an example of, of, uh, of topics that will happen there. Um, and we'll definitely need to, I'll, I'll go ahead and get links in the future uh, meetings so that we can link them in here and we can be aware of those. Um, that's a good idea, Kim. Awesome. Kate, we're about out of time. Uh, thank you folks for coming. I appreciate the discussion today. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll keep on with, uh, with the necessary topics and trying to raise awareness and, and, and the progress that we do make as a community. Grateful for all of your efforts. And the things that uh, and, and the work that everyone does uh, to benefit of the community. Grateful for all you do. And we will see you elsewhere, of course, and next week at this meeting. Thanks, folks.